One key strategy to advanced surfing is pre-strafing to start a map with extra speed. Without pre-strafing, if you leave a start zone by just walking, you'll only have 260 units per second of speed. Slightly better is if you jump, you'll start with 260 units plus the units you gained in falling. But to increase your starting speed even more, you can do a pre-strafe, which is just a regular air strafe done before the map starts. Air strafing in general will increase your speed, especially when you're moving slowly, which is why it's so important at the beginning of maps and stages. The most consistent and easy way to do a pre-strafe is to look back over your right shoulder, press A and W at the same time, do a consistent turn until you're facing forward, then jump. And as soon as you jump, let go of W, as you always do with air strafing, then strafe to the left and back to the right. Your goal is to barely miss the edge with your feet so you have the most possible downward speed before the timer starts. The timer starts whenever you leave the start zone, which is just a box that contains the starting area. If you jump right off the edge, your timer will start while you're still strafing, adding a second or so to your run as you wait to fall to the first ramp. But if you strafe in the starting area, your timer doesn't start until you leave it. A good start speed is above 400 units. Upper 400s is great. By the way, your starting amount here is your XYZ speed, so your horizontal and falling speed are taken into account. But the center speed here I have only showing the horizontal speed, my XY speed. Maps below tier 3 can be completed without a good pre-strafe usually, but tier 3 and above sometimes require the extra distance you can get from a pre-strafe to land on a ramp or require the extra speed to complete the map. If you're only trying to complete a map and not worried about your time, pre-strafe outside the starting zone if it's easier to be smooth that way. If you can find a higher spot to start from, use it for a faster downward starting speed. Some maps have a little lip you can jump off too. At the beginning of stages after the first stage, the idea is similar, but the clock is already ticking, so you don't want to back up and do a slow, smooth pre-strafe. You want to start moving forward as soon as possible. Jump and do quick strafe so you're still moving toward your goal. Rarely, but sometimes in a speedrun, you don't want to jump before the stage starts if the jump would be too out of the way and not gain you enough speed to make it up. This happens when you spawn right on the edge of a fall and you fall for a long time, especially if you're approaching the speed cap. For example, on this stage, you just want to walk forward and start falling immediately. A jump here would just make you linger in the air for too long. Stages that start with boosts are similar. Boosts simply add a set amount to your current speed, so you can start with more speed by strafing into it. So just walking into it gives you this much speed, but if you're moving faster by strafing and turning while walking, that speed gets added onto your speed boost. As you're moving through the map, little air strafes can increase your speed. You'll see the best surfers use these during long straight hang time throughout maps. It increases your speed to air strafe, and it's almost always worth the little extra distance, especially toward the start of the map since you carry that speed with you throughout the rest of the map. When you're turning, keep an eye on your speed. If you turn too fast, you'll lose speed, but if you turn slowly, you'll gain speed. The faster you're moving, the slower you need to turn to gain speed, and the slower you're moving, the faster you can turn and still gain speed. How fast you can turn without losing speed is different on servers that are 66 tick or 100 tick. Most servers are 66 tick, and on these servers you need to turn slower to gain speed, but on 100 tick you can turn faster and still gain speed. 66 tick is the main competitive surf scene, it's what the maps are designed for. 100 tick is fun because of the insane shortcuts you can pull off with the extra speed you got from your strafes. It's easier to beat maps as well on 100 tick, since you're not punished so hard for turning fast or being shaky. So turning slow is better for keeping speed, but in speedruns the goal isn't to finish the map with a lot of speed, the goal is to finish the map soon, in the least time. That means that sometimes you want to disregard smooth turns and cut corners to reduce your overall distance to the end. Cutting corners with a sharp turn will reduce your speed, but the essence of speedrunning surf is balancing cutting corners and turning smoothly, and optimizing this balance to reduce time. When to keep speed or cut a corner is situational. Generally, if you have a lot of the map left and you add some distance to your run to save your speed, you can make that up in a few seconds. Like on this stage in Omnific, the world record route takes a long slow turn to the far side of the next ramp to conserve as much speed as possible for the rest of the stage. They could have turned sharp to the close side of the ramp to reduce the overall distance to the end, but this would take away a few hundred units of speed. Since there's so much more of this map still to go, they easily make up that time over the extra distance with their conserved speed. But if you're near the end of the map, cutting corners hard is almost always worth it. The only way to know which one is better is to try both and compare times, but usually you can just copy whatever the world record does. 
The same principles of turning fast and slow also applies when you're on ramps. Since turning fast can slow you down, it's better to land on the far side of the ramp to avoid that hard snap turn to land smoothly on the close side. Landing on the far side lets you make a smooth turn instead of a hard snap, keeping more speed. But the same balance also applies because sometimes it's better to land on the close side to reduce the overall distance traveled. The concept of smooth turns also applies to when you jump from a ramp. If you're moving really fast, turn slowly toward the ramp to keep the most speed. To jump extra high with a hard flick when you're moving fast, start moving up the ramp slowly, then right at the end, flick. This avoids losing all your speed by turning too sharply, but still gives you the height boost of an intense flick. Effectively, instead of turning 90 degrees sharply, you're turning 45 slowly without losing speed, and 45 sharply to get the height boost at the cost of some speed. For less intense flicks, turn most of the way smoothly, and just flick a few extra degrees right at the end. To get more distance from your jumps, the concept is similar, but don't leave the ramp at the top. Flick from the bottom and at the very end. This starts the arc of your jump later, giving you more distance. This is also useful when there's a low ceiling. Jump from the bottom of the ramp. Landing smoothly on ramps is all about making sure your body never has an immediate change of direction. If you see any bumps like these, you've lost speed. Bumps like this will stop you from finishing most tier 5s, and you'll have a hard time with tier 4s. Use the full ramp as much as possible to smooth out your landings. Land near the spine, giving you the most space to slide down the ramp as slowly as possible. If you land on a ramp and you're already moving parallel with it, you don't have to strafe away to be smooth though, as long as you don't see an immediate change of direction, a bump. If you're falling down and landing on a ramp that's facing down, you don't have to strafe away from it either, since you're already parallel with it. Sometimes when you have a lot of speed and you're falling onto a ramp like this, it's easier to land smoothly if you strafe away from it, come back, and land on the far side of the ramp. On bumpy ramps, instead of surfing straight down it, treat each section like a new ramp to reduce speed lost from the bumpiness. Speedrunning maps is all about getting to the end of the map sooner, so on sections with long falls, do whatever you can to complete that fall as soon as possible. For example, leave the ramp before the fall sooner so you can start the fall sooner so you can end the fall sooner. If you leave it from the last ramp, you wait in the air a long time. But if you jump into the fall from way back here, you've already got downward speed when you reach the fall, cutting time off your run. Another example is this ramp. If I leave the ramp at the end, I have to do an extra long strafe to wait for myself to fall onto the next ramp. But if I leave the ramp early, I can go straight to the next ramp, improving my time by a second or two. The same thing happens on this map. Leaving the ramp at the end makes me wait and spin awkwardly before the next ramp. But leaving the first ramp early makes my route more direct, and I can land on the next ramp sooner. I also leave this ramp early to fall sooner into the next section. And by the way, I also press duck here just as I go over this ledge, so I can stay as low as possible in this jump. But in general, don't press duck while you're turning, or you'll lose speed. The same concept of falling sooner goes for the end of stages where the teleporter to the next stage is on the ground. Start the fall into the teleporter early so you can land on it as soon as you get to it, instead of jumping to it at the very end and waiting to fall down. Head hits on flat surfaces can also be used to start moving downward faster. Usually you want to avoid hitting your head because it'll reduce your speed a little and shorten your jump. But if you want to boost your downward speed, a slight bump will give you some immediate downward velocity. Head surfing on inverted ramps can also help you move down sooner and faster. Treat these just like regular ramps where you want to land on them smoothly, starting at the spine and moving toward the base until you're lined up with it. Then turn toward the spine to push downward off them. Approaching from the side of it, line yourself up with it, then turn toward it to push down. Here's a head surf that if you hit it head on, you'll lose a couple hundred units of speed. But if you line up with it and then push down, you'll keep that speed. Sometimes it's important to push off these smoothly to keep the most speed, but on other maps the turning would take too much time, or lining up the strafe might be too slow, so hitting them unsmoothly will be quicker to start your downward velocity if you don't need to conserve your speed. If you don't want to gain a lot of downward speed from a sloped ceiling, you can turn to be aligned with it while you hit it. Then it's just like hitting a regular flat ceiling.
For rounded head surfs, you can push against them the same way. Some maps have platforms to b-hop on. Landing on a flat b-hop while moving downward will take away all your vertical speed, so if you can, line yourself up with the ground before you b-hop so you have no downward speed to lose. On maps that have a b-hop at the bottom of a ramp, turn on that ramp to line yourself up with the ground before using the b-hop. This will convert your downward speed to horizontal speed so you can conserve your speed in the jump. If I surf roughly into it, I have this much speed and jump this far. But if I line up with it first, I have more speed and jump much further. It's even worth it in cramped spaces like this. Lining up with it gains you a couple hundred units. Slanted b-hops will give you a speed boost when you land on them. On some source games like TF2, if you're moving too slowly, you won't get the speed boost, so try strafing hard as you're landing onto it. Upward slanted b-hops will give you a height boost as you glide off them. Landing on them straight will give you a little height boost, but you can get a bigger height boost by lining up with them and strafing quickly toward them, just like you would a ramp. But if you don't want this height boost, you can land sideways on them to treat it like a flat surface. The world record route of beginner does this because the extra height would make them take longer to land on the final platform. On maps that let you move very fast, keep in mind the speed cap. Most maps have a speed cap of 3500 units per second. Once you've reached the speed cap, the way you surf changes in a few ways. When you land on a ramp, you don't need to land smoothly because you can't gain any more speed from a smooth landing. In fact, if you try to land smoothly, that strafe will probably slow you down because of the quick snap movement, and it usually takes you out of your way, adding distance between you and the end zone. It's best to land flat on the ramp. You also don't need to move to the bottom of a ramp because the extra speed you would have gained from moving downward gets absorbed by the speed cap, so you effectively lose potential energy. This is bad if later you need to do a jump because you'll have less potential height. Usually you want to stay to the tops of ramps. Surfing this ramp to the bottom when you've already reached the speed cap makes it difficult to complete the next jump, for example. Stay toward the top to retain the most speed. You also don't want to do any extra air strafing when you're speed capped because you can't gain any more speed and the S movement required for air strafing will only increase the distance you travel. On a staged map, when you reach the end of the stage, the way you hit the teleporter is very important if you're speedrunning the stage. When you get teleported to the next stage, your vertical momentum is retained. So the fastest way to start the next stage is to hit the teleporters with downward momentum so that you're already falling to the ground, then you can hit the ground sooner and start the stage sooner. If you hit the teleporter with upward speed, you'll float for about an extra second, adding time to your run. Some transitions have so much float time that you could do a spin to hit the ground moving. At the end of the map, the end zone is a box just like the start zone. As soon as you touch that box, your timer stops. This means that you don't actually need to land on the ending platform for your timer to stop. If you're approaching the end zone from below, stay low and fly through it instead of waiting to fall to the ground. Surf Ing is a map that shows the balance between speed and least distance in its world record route. For example, obviously going to the bottom of a ramp gives you more speed so the world record route is to land and immediately go to the bottom of each of these ramps. If you make a direct line down them, you don't gain speed as soon, and it makes your route a lot slower. However, after the first turn, since you have to do a jump, the route doesn't go to the bottom of these ramps. The surfer stays to the top to decrease the overall distance traveled. Finding the fastest route to beat a map is a balance of cutting corners and surfing smoothly. A straight line to the finish is always desirable, so instead of following the natural flow of the ramps, Look for skips that would make it more direct toward the finish. This could mean instead of using this ramp on the outside of a turn, jump through the air and follow the inside of a turn. In a long straight section like this, the fastest way is straight from this ramp to this curved section. But keep in mind your speed. It's not possible to then jump straight to the next ramp because it would be too rough of a jump to make that distance, so sometimes a smooth detour is better in the end because of the speed you can serve. Gaining speed and cutting corners are usually opposites and work against each other. An intense dip gains you speed sooner, but a straight line is better if keeping low is out of the way. But if going low isn't out of the way, it gives you more speed, so aim to be as low on ramps as possible. So the key is to look for the most direct line from point A to point B, while staying as smooth as you can to keep your speed, going low to get the most speed. 
In general, it's good to have a lower sensitivity on your mouse so that you can turn more smoothly. I'd recommend turning down your sensitivity as low as you can while still being able to complete a 360 in one movement. The best players have mouse pads that are about a meter long so their movements can be as precise as possible. And when they need more than 360 degrees, they use turn binds. I'd also recommend turning off mouse acceleration and making sure your mouse doesn't have built-in mouse acceleration. Having a consistent turn, no matter how fast or slow you move your mouse, can increase the accuracy of your turns. But either way, be aware of your mouse positioning. Before you take a long left turn, pick up your mouse and move it to the right side of your mouse pad so you have enough space to move left. And always be thinking about what the next turn requires and position your mouse to be ready for it. A lot of the details and specific applications of advanced surfing are so varied and situational, it's better to take each map case by case. So in the future, I'd like to create a series of videos, each covering a single map, its speedrun routes, and the easiest way to beat it, and really apply these surfing concepts to actual scenarios.